Hey everybody, welcome back to A Dad's Life. And today we're going to be going over my brand new project. already recorded what I'm about to tell you but unfortunately the wind at the site was so bad that all you could hear was just the wind ripping over the microphone so everything I've already said is gone so I'm gonna explain it to you on this video and hopefully you enjoy what I can put together so this is what hopefully my building will look like when it's done this is a rendering of the building that's done before it's built. It helps the owner of the building kind of uh, sell units, I mean not sell, rent units that are gonna be in the property and help them move along their process of getting loans and getting other investors on board. Uh, we usually farm out the renderings to like different companies that do the render for the owner and then we turn around and give that back to the owner. Sometimes we do it in house, sometimes we you know, uh, farm it out depending on if we are able to do it in house or not because a lot of it depends on if we even have the time because we're busy working on other projects. So this is something we kind of give to the owner to let them use on their marketing and to put out front on the uh, site signage of what's to come and who's the designer and who's the firm that actually does it. So let's basically go over what happens during the first meeting. Uh, right now, this is the, the way the site looked at my first meeting. There's not much has been done. Usually during the first meeting, they're prepping the ground to actually start a lot of the civil work. And so during the first meeting, usually what ends up happening is we go to the general contractor's office because there's not a job trailer that's on the site for us to meet in because a lot of the work hasn't been done yet. So during the first meeting, what usually end up happening is we kind of get introduced to the team from the general contractor side of who's going to be working on the project. So we usually end up meeting the foreman, we meet the superintendent, and then the project manager. Now, the foreman on the job, he's usually the guy that is going to be on site every single day. The foreman, he usually handles uh, the go-between in between what is the subcontractors doing from the electrical, the drywall guys, the roofers, the concrete, the uh, civil guys that are coming out and working. He's the one that is the go-between between all the disciplines that are on the site. He stays on the site. He manages the carpenters, the electricians, the HVAC guys. He's the guy that makes sure they're doing what they're doing. He's their guidance. He's the one that directs them on what to do, when, where, and how. Then we meet, you know, that we meet the foreman, and then we meet the superintendent, which the superintendent is the guy who sometimes is on the field, sometimes he's not. Uh, he's the one that directs the foreman on the timeline of the building of you need to have this completed at this time you need to have that completed at this time he's the one that structures the build during the process to make sure everything falls in line and then we also meet the project manager uh, the project manager for this one he's the one that selects uh, what team's going to be on the job what staff he has he manages that project from the general contractor side. We usually don't get involved with messing with the GC's project manager unless something major is happening or something bad is happening. He has all the final say on the staffing for that project from their side and he delegates 
the work to that project from their staffing standpoint. So during the first meeting, it's kind of shaking hands and introducing yourself and kind of just getting introduced to the team and what they're gonna be doing on the site. So on my second site visit, uh, usually on the site, not too much changes uh, during the first couple months of the project. Uh, a lot of paperwork and a lot of behind the scenes stuff happens. Uh, a lot of what happens in between the first month of a project and the second month of the project on our end and on the GC's end is finalizing all the bids from the subcontractors. They usually end up pulling the uh, permits for the project and start finalizing what they bid. On our end, what usually end up, ends up happening in between the first couple months of the project is what's called submittals and RFIs. That is when the general contractor uh, really goes through the drawings, I mean with a fine tooth comb, and they see any potential issues with the drawings or have any questions of how to construct a certain part of the building, it comes into a form of a RFI, which is a request for information. It's basically a question from the general contractor that's documented and it comes to us for us to give answers. Sometimes it's a mechanical question, sometimes it's electrical, civil or structural or architectural. They request that information and we give them a response. And that response is documented because later on, sometimes you have to follow back because that RFI may have a question about a certain window type or a certain installation of the project and they have a question about it. And if we give an answer to that, well, later on, that may affect something else. And we say, well, we didn't tell you to do that. You can say, oh, well, yes, you did. For example, they could have a question about a certain cabinet size. And we say, well, use this cabinet to replace whatever's there because they couldn't order it or something. And then they go to put it in the refrigerator and it doesn't fit. And we say, why doesn't fit? Well, we had to use this cabinet. Well, why did you use that cabinet? Well, we had an RFI because we couldn't use the original cabinet. We used this cabinet. Now it doesn't fit. That's an issue. So RFIs are just questions from the GC that comes to us. The other thing that happens during this process is submittals. Now, submittals on my end, they eat up the majority of the time I spend on the back end of the project. What a submittal is, is a GC has a submittal, which is a documentation from whatever they're using to construct the building. And everything that goes into a building is turned into a submittal, everything. If it is boats for timbers or the timbers themselves, all the wall materials, every material has its own data sheet that is sent to me and we call that a submittal. So for instance, this project has an elevator. Okay, when the, the elevator manufacturer, the GC selects a certain type of elevator and they send that to the GC of, this is the elevator you selected, which I could go on for hours about elevator selection because there's so many codes involved with them. So they send that elevator model and package to the general contractor and they look at it and it's like, yeah, that's the one we want to install. So they send that packet that has all the information about that elevator, how it's put together, deductical components, how it's wired, how it's cooled, the uh, panels that are in the elevator, the buttons, every option available, how it's made, all the information is sent to me. I go through that submittal and I send it out, send it out to our interior design team. I send it out to MEP, which is Mechanical, Electrical and Plumbing. I send it out to Structural. So we have four different reviews on just one product. 
and that's the case for almost everything. So this is how the site looks on my second visit. They've done a little more prep to the site. They've already installed the sheet piles, which they are, I think, 45 feet of half inch steel that's corrugated. And they brought in a big crane and they ram the sheet piles down into the foundation of the pond. And that basically closes off that portion of the pond where they can backfill it and start building the foundation to the building, which they're going to be having uh, pylons that are drove down into the ground and then excavated out to fill with concrete. That's kind of what the building is going to be sitting on because the location of this building, well, it's, it's being built by a river and the, the ground to this is really not stable. We did so many borings down to get a, a geotech report to tell us, okay, this is the condition of the soil that this building is going to be built on. And this is what you're going to have to do to make sure this building is safe. So as you can see, going around the site, uh, usually, like I said, during the first couple months, not much work has been done, but moving forward, there's going to be, it's going to be ramped up greatly. There's going to be a lot more stuff going on and then we'll go over it then. But for now, uh, thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you then. I put a picture piece on the mouse, so I don't think you could tell that I was laughing. I did.